Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Corporate Sourcing of Renewable Energy in Japan webcast. We are really excited to have all of you join us, especially on such a momentous day in Japan. Um, <clears throat> this announcement today from the Prime Minister is uh, incredibly exciting, and I think we had really superb planning on our end uh, to coincide our, uh, our webcast with today's news. So my name is Alexandra Klassen. I work for the Climate Group as the Senior Impact Manager of RE100, and I will be your virtual host today. RE100 is a global initiative led by the Climate Group in partnership with CDP that brings together over 260 of the world's most influential businesses committed to 100% renewable electricity. The webcast today has been organized by RE100 and the Global Wind Energy Council, or GWEC, which is the industry association representing wind power in emerging markets around the world, in partnership also with Baker McKenzie and the Global Solar Council. Next slide, please. Today's webcast on Japan rounds out our corporates in the global energy transition series. Uh, in the last several months, we've discussed the local challenges and opportunities of corporate renewable energy procurement in India, Taiwan, Singapore and Southeast Asia and Australia, all markets where uh, corporate demand for renewables can become a significant driver of growth. In case you'd like to catch up on the series, you can review all of the recordings on GWEX YouTube page. Perfect. And just wanted to share some uh, very important instructions, uh, bring your attention to them on how to use the Zoom platform today before we, uh, before we start the webcast. So we will have 30 minutes of networking after the webcast hosted on Zoom. So you can find your audio and video settings on the bottom left here. If you have any questions for our speakers at any point, you can input them into that Q&A box right there. And if you have any technical issues or questions for the organizers, you can put them into the chat box over there. And finally, we have engaged live interpretation for this webinar. You can choose your preferred language, English or Japanese, by navigating to the interpretation icon on the bottom of your Zoom window and selecting your language. If there are any issues using this function, please do send us a message on the chat and we'll help you figure, figure it out. And uh, lastly, please note that this webinar will be recorded and again made available on the GWEC YouTube page after this event. So now moving on to the agenda, uh, we are very privileged to have with us today a group of seasoned experts. Um, we have Joyce Lee, who will be giving us the opening remarks. She's the Policy and Operations Director for GWEC. And then we have uh, three partners from um, Baker McKenzie, who will take you through the market readiness and regulatory environment of corporate PPAs in Japan. That's uh, Ewan, Nick, and Masahiro. And then we will also uh, hear from Yasufomi from Fujifilm who will talk about the challenges and opportunities of procuring renewables in Japan. And then we will all have a roundtable discussion that will be moderated by Yusuke Matsu from the Japan Climate Leaders Partnership. Uh, JCLP is also uh, the RE100 partner in Japan. They've been absolutely instrumental in the growth of uh, Japanese RE100 members, now our second largest membership region after the US. So I will pause here and hand over the mic to Joyce. Thank you very much, Alex. And on behalf of the Global Wind Energy Council, it is a great pleasure to join you all today for the final webcast in our series this year on corporate procurement of renewable energy in emerging markets across the Asia Pacific region. This is, as Alex mentioned, a momentous day to be holding this webinar given the announcement by Prime Minister Suga for Japan's net zero commitment by 2050. This will, of course, have implications for the country's master energy strategy and its long-term electricity mix, which is currently aiming for a ramp up of renewables like wind and solar energy to nearly one quarter of Japan's electricity by 2030, and a ramp down of coal fire generation, which currently provides around one third of Japan's power and is still targeted for one quarter of the power mix by 2030. A cleaner energy system is favored by the economics of renewables, which have seen dramatic cost reduction, 
as well as sources like offshore wind, which offer a response to land use and terrain challenges in Japan. GWEC is already forecasting more than seven gigawatts of offshore wind to be installed in Japan through 2030, and more than one gigawatt of floating offshore wind, mostly in the latter half of the decade. And of course, a greater emphasis on renewables is also being driven by the corporates operating in Japan, which are increasingly making commitments to coalitions like the RE100 and targeting ambitious emissions reductions. So there's clear demand for renewable energy from policymakers for large scale installations and from industry for greater access, direct procurement and larger volumes. I'm looking forward to the presentations today on how this is working on the ground in Japan, the market readiness and the barriers for corporate sourcing, as well as the real world experience of a buyer and what can be done to really unlock the growth opportunities of the corporate market in Japan. So thank you very much. And I look forward to a dynamic discussion ahead. Thank you very much, Joyce. So now we are welcome to um, Let's introduce our first uh, our first speakers for the day. So it's Ewan McPherson, uh, Nick Aguchi, and Masahira Tanabi from Baker McKenzie, who will be speaking about the market readiness and regulatory environment of corporate PPAs in Japan. Gentlemen, you're all set. Great, uh, thank you very much, Joyce and Alexandra. Uh, it is a very exciting day. Uh, we're all very happy to be here talking. Um, I won't spend a lot of time introducing us, but we all work in the Renewable and Clean Energy Group of Bakers in Tokyo. I've been in Japan now for 20 years, and I think the pace of change is only getting faster. And day after day, we see new and, and more exciting developments happening in Japan. Today, we're going to split our talk into sort of three sections. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the market forces that are impacting on corporate PPAs in Japan. I'll hand over to our partner, Naoki Nick Iguchi, who will talk about some of the regulatory issues. And our colleague, Masa Tanabe, will then talk about some of the structures we could use for corporate PPAs. All of them are important. Um, I think understanding the background to the market will, 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 will allow us to really understand why Japan hasn't had so much growth in this area. So just turning to the next slide, thanks. Sure. Yes. Okay. So um, the really big factor that's held back corporate PPAs in Japan is the fact that Japan has had a very, very generous FIT scheme. So if you look at this chart, you can see when the FIT scheme began in Japan in 2012, the FIT price for solar projects was 40 yen uh, a kilowatt hour. That was one of the highest prices in the world. And what it of course meant was developers primarily sold into the FIT scheme. There was very little incentive for them to sell into the corporate PPA market because the FIT scheme was so very generous. And you can see that over time, the FIT price uh, decreased. It was an average of 10% a year, it was decreasing. And as of today, you know, we're down to about 12 yen a kilowatt hour. So over time, the price has come down. If we go to the next slide, What, what, what's been happening in parallel, you know, we've had uh, the electricity price sitting, um, you know, uh, around the levels you see there, you know, higher for household users, but even for industrial customers, still well below those very generous FIT rates. Um, so there was very little incentive, very little, um, you know, market pressure on um, developers or, or, corp or corporate users to, to source their energy under a corporate PPA. It was much better for them to go to the utilities. Um, so going ahead to the next slide. The big question has been, of course, when do we get grid parity? When does the cost of uh, generation fall to the level where we, we see corporate PPAs uh, being used to offtake electricity rather than selling under the FIT scheme? And the NETO, um, Japan's advisory body, has sort of split the... Um, the, uh, the, the grid parity into three phases. And, and one of the viewpoints now is that we're probably at the second phase where electricity costs are around 14 yen a kilowatt hour. Uh, and that's almost crossing over to the, to the market price. So ideally what we see from here on in is, is renewable energy developers, it becomes a lot more attractive 
for them to sell electricity under corporate PPAs. And the FIT scheme, which has now moved to an auction scheme, uh, reverse prices, um, no longer is, is the main uh, driver of uh, renewable energy development in Japan, but instead we see more liquidity in that market and, and, and much more electricity being sold under corporate PPAs. So with that note, I'll hand over to Nick, uh, who will take us through some of the regulatory issues. Uh, Nick, over to you. Um, thank you, Ian. Hi, I'm Nick Eguchi. Um, I'm a partner of Baker McKenzie Tokyo office. I'm handling uh, renewable power projects. And I'd like to uh, talk about the regulatory environment. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the feeding tariff uh, price is getting lower and lower. Uh, but uh, still, um, uh, the, the market uh, amount and the feed-in tariff is not uh, reached uh, grid parity yet. Uh, but uh, assuming we'll reach the grid parity soon, still uh, we have uh, regulatory barriers to boost the corporate PPAs. Uh, the biggest barrier uh, is uh, the retail license and the electric uh, business uh, act. Uh, in order to be a, a retailer, uh, you need to register uh, the, uh, under the system. Uh, the system. Uh, so, the, for example, for solar power generator can't sell uh, the power uh, to the, the general consumer uh, or one-to-one -one basis to um, uh, the RE100 users uh, without the uh, licensing. Uh, that is a, a, the biggest uh, hurdle uh, we need to overcome um, uh, to boost the corporate PPA in Japan. Um, next slide, please. Um, those those uh, corporate uh, PPA uh, is uh, not uh, so straightforward. So uh, we have a sub, some ways to, to, for corporates to procure the renewable uh, energies. Uh, uh, one uh, left-hand side is uh, on-site uh, behind the meta PPAs. Uh, this is a, a kind of a self-consumption uh, structure uh, where you don't need a, a licensing. So this is the easiest uh, way. Uh, but uh, the, the location is very limited, uh, so it's not easy to do uh, on-site uh, PPAs. So the, the second one is uh, off-site um, self-weeding uh, PPAs. Uh, you can use um, off-site uh, solar power stations or, or wind power stations. Uh, and you use the, the grid as a weeding um, purpose to your uh, uh, location uh, or your group company's locations. But uh, you need to pay a willing charge and also uh, the surcharge, um, uh, willing charge. So that is an extra cost uh, for, um, the, for uh, doing an offsite uh, self willing structure. The Sony uh, started uh, this structure, uh, but uh, uh, I think it takes time uh, because uh, the price competitiveness is not uh, yet uh, to the, the market competitive level. And the third one is a green electricity products. Uh, this is offered uh, by licensed uh, retailers. Uh, for example, um, uh, that uh, typical uh, provide uh, water uh, power related uh, the menu. So you can uh, purchase um, this uh, special menu, although the price is a little bit higher than the normal price. Um, and the fourth one are the renewable or energy certificates. Um, so you can buy a certificate uh, from uh, 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 market. It, it, there are several uh, types, and the J credits and the green energy certificates. Uh, those are easy 
uh, certificates. Uh, and with respect to uh, non-fossil certificates, uh, you need to make sure uh, the sources should be uh, uh, the renewable power source. So you need to have a tracking system uh, to track the actual uh, nature of, of the power uh, to use the non-fossil uh, certificates. So uh, there are several uh, ways to procure the, uh, the renewable power, but uh, we must have a, the corporate PPA to boost the uh, large amount of corporate uh, uh, sources for renewables. So OMASA will uh, look around as some uh, structures uh, to achieve this purpose. So over to you, Masa. Okay, so thank you, Nick. Uh, my name is Masa Tanabe. I'm counsel at the Baker McKenzie Tokyo office. And I have been uh, assisting uh, uh, power project developers as well as uh, retailers. And as Nick said, uh, there are certain ways for corporates to procure renewable energy uh, electricity, but at some time, uh, there will be a need for corporate PPAs. But the question is, what type of corporate PPAs are possible in Japan? and what is likely to happen uh, in the near future. One possible structure here is the sleeved PPA. A sleeved PPA is where a, a licensed retailer uh, becomes the intermediary and sleeves the electricity from the power generator to the corporate customer. So, um, at the moment, um, it looks like uh, some retailers in Japan are considering to uh, try to introduce this uh, structure. And this, this structure will be compliant with the Electricity Business Act um, and the retailer would take the imbalance risk. So this is good for uh, corporate consumers. But at the same time, the corporate consumers will need to uh, look for retailers uh, to get involved in the structure. And we'll also uh, likely need to pay a premium price to the retailers for them to uh, be involved in this structure. Another structure uh, that could happen uh, in the near future is the virtual PPA. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, virtual PPAs is where um, there is no physical transfer of, of electricity. This means that this structure, this virtual PPA structure will be outside of the uh, requirements under the Japanese Electricity Business Act. So you can go, go, go around uh, the requirement of the retail license that Nick uh, explained earlier. Also, the con corporate consumer can directly contract with a generator. But this structure um, will be subject to the Japanese derivatives laws and also will require a, a separate accounting analysis. But what will happen in the next few years possibly is uh, the next slide, which is a combination of feed-in premium and sleeved PPA. The new feed-in premium uh, program is expected to uh, start in April, 2022. And it's being designed by the Japanese government at the moment. So the details are not yet available, but it appears to be uh, that the generator will be able to sell electricity directly to the retailer and also the environmental attributes directly to the retailer. This means that 
the sleeved PPA structure that we discussed uh, earlier uh, could be combined with the feed-in premium program. And so this feed-in program, feed-in premium program uh, could help uh, start the sleeved PPA practice uh, in Japan. So it's very important to follow the feed-in premium uh, discussion that the Japanese government is uh, uh, doing now and to design the, uh, the sleeved PPA uh, based on this uh, feed-in premium program. So again, um, as uh, we've been discussing, now is a perfect time to have this uh, corporate PPA seminar. As Ian said, uh, Japan is reaching, has reached or is reaching grid parity. And as Nick uh, explained, there are certain barriers, um, but we believe it's, it's possible to overcome those barriers. Um, so we, we think this year or maybe next year um, could, be, could be the starting year for corporate PPAs in Japan. Um, so we, we look forward to working with you all on uh, developing um, and expanding corporate PPAs in Japan. Thank you. Thank you, you and Nick and Masa for illustrating the possible procurement methods um, of renewables for businesses now in Japan and the potential future developments. It's uh, definitely, I'm sure many of our um, RE100 member companies are really looking forward to um, you know, fully seeing grid parity and new procurement methods that come, um, that come onto the market, enabling them to meet their targets. Um, so next, I, uh, if you can move the slide, yes, thank you. I'd like to welcome Yasufumi Nakai. He's the general manager for Ecology and Quality Management Group in the ESG division of Fujifilm Holdings Corporation. And he'll be giving the, the buyer's perspective um, of what it's like procuring uh, renewables in Japan. So I hand over the floor to you, yes, for me. Uh, thank you for all the introduction for me and also giving us opportunity to present my, our activities. So I'm Yasumi Nakai, Fujifilm Holdings Corporation, and I'm going to uh, present renewable energy sourcing in the Fujifilm Group. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, first, I'd like to start with uh, our CSO plan. This diagram shows our structure of our CSO plan, and we have identified six uh, priority area, and, and, and environment is uh, one of the priority area. Uh, this means uh, uh, introducing uh, renewable energy is a part of this CSO plan. So next slide, please. In the private area environment, so there are four private issues and that address can change the first uh, private issue. And we have two set two targets. Uh, one is uh, uh, reduce the Fujifilm Group's carbon dioxide emission by 45% by fiscal year 2030 uh, compared to the fiscal year 2013 level. So this directly links the introduction of uh, uh, renewable energy. And the second target uh, contribute to 90 million tons of carbon dioxide emission reduction is uh, to is uh, for uh, reduction uh, by our products and services in the society. So next slide, please. So this shows our carbon uh, progress of carbon dioxide emission uh, reduction across the entire product life cycle. So we calculate the total carbon dioxide emission across the entire product life cycle. So in uh, 2019, uh, last year, we uh, uh, reduced carbon dioxide emission uh, by 30%, and it's the same as the original target. Uh, that is why we raised the target as 45%, and this target uh, meets the SBTI criteria well below 2 degrees. So, our next slide, please. So, how to uh, reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions? So uh, this uh, chart uh, figure uh, shows the uh, carbon dioxide emissions by stages in life cycle and for procurement and use. And for procurement, uh, this uh, emission derived from the raw materials and the parts used for products. That is why environmental concept product design is a key to reduce uh, carbon, dioxide carbon dioxide emissions. 
Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for manufacturing, uh, we have taking uh, three approaches. Uh, one is uh, we are using uh, in-house co-generation system, which produce uh, both electricity and steam, uh, steam in high energy efficiency because in some manufacturing process, so steam is essential. And also we seek further improvement with energy using efficiency, uh, energy saving uh, methods. And the third one is the introduction of renewable energy. So next spread, next please. So in uh, 2019, we have uh, published the targets for the introduction of renewable energy uh, based on the uh, comp composition of, uh, of energy we are using. So 50% of electricity and 50% is uh, fuel and maybe uh, natural gas. So we have set the two targets, uh, convert 50% of purchased electricity, 50 power to renewable energy derived power by fiscal year 2000. 30 as the first step, and convert 100% of purchased electricity power to renewable energy derived power, and convert fuels to hydrogen fuel in our in house co generation systems, aiming at zero carbon dioxide emissions in all energy use by fiscal year 2050. Uh, so, significance of uh, this target is uh, one uh, express extending use of renewable energy as a consumer uh, consumer of energy. So, uh, we can have uh, more uh, communication to various parties about energy issues, and also we highlighted the need to decarbonize uh, the both electricity and the fuel to achieve a decarbonized society. So today's topic is mainly uh, the electricity, but uh, I like to uh, refer to. Uh, to uh, fuel as well, because uh, this is necessary for our uh, production. So next slide, please. Uh, decarbonization of both electricity and fuel. So, so we are producing uh, some functional materials and we need to maintain high temperature conditions in casting and drying processes. Uh, that is why we are using cogeneration system, which provides uh, steam and uh, electricity in high efficiency. So this picture uh, shows uh, the, the example of the system of cultivation. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, as fuel, decarbonization of fuel is a common issue across the material industry using high temperature process and much challenging than uh, decarbonization of electricity as it requires a new infrastructure. Uh, but, so various materials, materials uh, produced in upper stream of industry uh, is, are incorporating the products into the downstream supply chain. So uh, not only decarbonization of electric electricity, but decarbonization of fuel is one of the keys to achieve uh, decarbonization to the whole supply chain and towards a sustainable society. So an extra please. So this is one reason to join our E100. So our plan to, is to uh, decarbonize both electricity and fuel. Uh, so uh, we have contacted the climate group and uh, talk about our uh, target plan and target. And uh, this plan was uh, recognized as a consistent with the aim of our R100. And we are presenting this approach and uh, contribute to the realizing society. So the other aspect of an environmental product is uh, it's a requirement uh, information disclosure based on the TCF recommendations. So we start a scenario analysis this year and the next slide please. Uh, we uh, conducted uh, two uh, analysis, two degree scenario analysis and four degree scenario analysis. Uh, this slide shows the two uh, results of two degree scenario analysis and uh, as a major so introduction of a renewable energy is a major to, against the risks. So that, that's why this is very important for us. So next slide, please. Okay, so uh, next I'm going to uh, present strategy to introducing renewable energy, uh, electricity, uh, today's topic. So this is my our understanding that the key factor is the feasibility of introducing renewable energy heavily depends on re regional characteristics, including Japan. And that's why we are taking these processes. Uh, first, uh, study social and geographical factors. Second, ass assess economic uh, rationality, supply volumes, and supply stability. So these three factors is uh, critical to, uh, to manufacturing. 
And we are sharing these kind of knowledge and experience uh, of introduction of renewable energy globally uh, within the Fujifilm group. And then uh, we are continue to explore opportunities to introduce renewable energy and identify the challenges. Then uh, we uh, decide to introduce renewable energy. So next slide shows some of our uh, experience uh, in by region uh, countries. For example, is the Netherlands, a strong system for supporting introduction of renewable energy, especially wind power. But on the other hand, Japan, high energy prices and compared to the other countries and regions. So that's why we continue to watch the trend and change and to find the opportunity. That's the current status. And the next slide shows uh, uh, some, some examples we have introduced the renewable energy. So this is a factory in uh, Netherlands. So we had a joint project with a local energy company. So 2011, uh, five wind turbines are installed on site. And uh, in 2016, we, uh, we have achieved 100% wind power uh, with electricity supplied from the wind power plants as a combination of electricity and electricity source. So next slide shows another uh, example in the US and China. So in these factories, uh, so we have installed solar panels, so power systems. And as an example in Belgium, so convert, we have convert purchase electricity to 100% renewable energy uh, from the various sources. So uh, the next slide is the last slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this shows the Fujifilm track records uh, we, on introducing renewable energy. And we, uh, we have introduced renewable energy step by step, uh, looking at the, uh, look for the opportunity to fulfill uh, the conditions. And you can see it's in the various sites, in, including Japan, and it's an install or purchase and various type of solar, uh, renewable energy and also capacity values. So uh, it is, it's, it's a, a, our understanding that it is very important to uh, continue to uh, seek for the opportunity to introduce uh, renewable energy and also based on our knowledge and experience. And uh, we are going to we are to for the introduction of renewable energy. So thank you for attention. Thank you very much, Yasufumi, for sharing Fujifilm's uh, strategy and journey to renewables. Uh, very interesting to see some of those case studies as well. Um, so I think we are ready, uh, just a couple of minutes past the hour, to jump into our roundtable. I've seen that there have been a number of questions already asked. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome um, Yusuke Matsu from Japan Climate Leaders Partnership to um, and all of the other speakers that we have heard from today uh, for about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour of a roundtable discussion. はい、ありがとうございます。え、JCLP事務局の、え、責任者を務めます松尾と申します。え、私の方はすいません、日本語でやらせていただきますように。えっと、冒頭何度もありましたけれども、今日、え、菅、え、首相がですね、日本のネット
私たちの考えでは私たちの考えでは、So, I think the,、uh, the company which、uh, expressing such message、uh, gather, so we, we can、uh, change the society or we can change our way of thinking. So, that, that's the one reason to join our E100. Hi, I got to go to the e えー、っとあの私あの、JCLP ご存知のない方もいらっしゃるかもしれません、すみません、自己紹介を遅れましたけれども、JC えー、JCLP はですねあの、日本の企業を中心に150社が集っております企業の年数。Of our E100 initiative taken on a Japanese company, is actually a member of JCLP, and we have like a vigorous discussion on how we could actually realize the big goal. So that's what we're doing right now as an organization. In the organization of JCLP, let me actually share some t o p i c that we're currently dis discussing. Some po possible items would be. Like a twice the bigger size of the capacity of the energy capacity that we have, we could actually generate that level of the capacity out of the renewable energy. That is the size of the renewable energy's potential. So then we need to have a social consensus on that, this notion. So it is viable, technically possible, but how we are going to address some issues ahead of us. So that is going to be the RE100. So for the Fuji film, there is another on a question related to that. So you are globally promoting the renewable energy consumption. So, so in that context, besides your group companies, are you going? To expand your initiative to other companies outside of your organization. In other words, to say, how do you think you can really influence the other companies? So, that's the reason why we joined our River 100 also, Japan CLP. So,、uh, the power and influence of one company is very limited. That's why we need to gather the voice. So, we are in need for renewable energy. Uh, that's why we are attending the various kinds of initiatives and also、uh, we express our position and what we are thinking to, to、uh, introduce renewable energies and converting to renewable energy. So, so this kind of conversation、uh, is,、uh, I think, extremely important. So that, that's our view. はい、ありがとうございました。ちょっとですね、あのベーカーマケニーさんにもいろいろご質問したいんですけども、その前に、ね、I also would like to ask some questions to Baker McKenzie team. However,、えー、ウェブページの方にお伺いしたいと思います。あの世界中で取り組みされている中で、日本に関しては少しあのまあ状況を見ていると、えー、落ちて、so, measures that you are taking. Especially in Japan, if you were to Seek 100% RE.、Uh, what are the two topmost challenges that you face? So, so for a manufacturing company like us,、uh, there are the three conditions so uh, economic uh, rationality, and uh, uh, supply volume, and supply stability. So,、uh, these three conditions are、uh, key to、uh, introduce renewable energy. That is why we are continue to find the opportunity and 
if possible, in, in the possible case, we have uh, introduced uh, a partial renewable energy even in Japan. But it is uh, at this point, it is very difficult to cover all the energy we are using, we use in some fun manufacturing uh, site. That, that is why uh, these three are conditions are, are, are common in, in global wise. So that, that, that's why so, uh, we are uh, continuing uh, such activity uh, to uh, try to find the opportunity to fulfill the, these three conditions. So in your organization, JCLP, we also have this kind of conversation. If we uh, compare uh, Japan's experience to the overseas experience, uh, economic rationality is the key issue or challenge. Now I'd like to ask the Baker McKinsey team, Overseas, especially in the US, uh, LE use has been on the rise. And the supply volume and also the purchase uh, volume uh, has have been in, in, on the rise. So how and why uh, is the background of this growth in the US? Hi, so this is Eguchi. And the price, because it's cheap, uh, companies are encouraged to participate. So that's why in the US, RE, uh, corporate PPA is on the rise. Baker McKenzie has been involved in a corporate PPA since its inception. And we have handled quite a, a volume. So the first important uh, difference between Japan and the US is the price, also the supply volume. So I noticed this as a difference. Do you have any information, Tanabe-san? In... I said this, uh, he said no. Okay, so the price as a differentiator. Okay, thank you for your comment. In Japan, as far as I know, corporate PPA uh, uh, is the, uh, the target of uh, many companies' interests. One is uh, the fit or post fit, uh, the, the rate is on the decrease. So from the supply side, that's a push. Also from the purchaser or buyer side, uh, it's cheaper. Corporate PPA is cheaper than fit. So that's also an encouragement. So that's why uh, the expectation uh, is on the rise. Now, so both purchaser and uh, supplier are very interested in corporate PPA. In Japan, what needs to be changed? So overseas, uh, the price is really cheap. However, if in Japan, the price is really expensive, then will there still be a room for growth? And next, Tanabe-san, the microphone is yours. So your question was a problem other than price? Hi. So I guess the demand side is expecting when uh, price uh, decreases, then there might be uh, more supply. But is there also a need for any policy side uh, 
factor that should help the increase of the corporate PPA in Japan? Well, as you mentioned earlier, in order for RE to be connected to the grid is the issue in Japan. So apart from that technical issue, what I mentioned today, the law regulation is also an, a challenge. The Electric Business Act, Electricity Business Act is the uh, challenge because it needs to go through the electric power companies. So there's not much incentive for the other participants to uh, engage themselves in the corporate PPA. So there is an institutional challenge, if you will. Do you have any comments to me? Right. So the supply volume is limited is another factor. But if you see Apple or Bali, then EP has small panels on their rooftop. And make a and the economies of scale. So I mean, there are ways to that can be worked on. Sony is also taking on this kind of challenge. Ian as well, which is a supermarket giant. And any uh, other companies who has their data centers, they're also uh, trying to switch to RE. So it's not an easy path to switch to RE. However, uh, there are some ways that can work uh, can be worked on. But in Japan, also the terrain is limited and the regulations on top of that. So if the regulation is too strict, then it's very, very difficult. Uh, it's not favorable, if you will, for the corporates to join P corporate PPAs. Okay, thank you. So when we talk about RE in Japan, there are many challenges, of course. Now I'd like to ask Mr. Nakai. So economic rationality is one aspect that you mentioned. And also the supply volume stability is another thing. So in Japan, what are the measures or approaches that you are taking in Japan? So what kind of expectations the government would have? So uh, what do you think? May I actually speak in Japanese to this question in, in that context? The, the condition of use and the energy has been already defined. So as a on the users, we should address and make a statement like, so the needs should be addressed to the white audience in the society. That's one thing we should do as an initiative internally. Just, as, just only one company is um, making so much effort is very unlimited, marginal. So we should actually get together as entire manufacturing industry, and then we should be able to um, go hand in hand and address our needs and our position. And if we could use the renewable energy as a industry as a whole, that would be the great driving force to change 
in a society. Thank you. Uh, we've been receiving any questions from the floor, so we would like to answer some of them. This is actually a, uh, a question to both Huji and McKinsey. And non-falsifiable value certificate, we have multiple questions regarding on that. So as a user company, you taking advantage of the non-fossil value certificate, you could actually achieve the 100% of the new renewable energy. How do you make of that? So maybe from maker McKinsey, pros and cons of non-fossil certificate, if we go into the two on um, detail, nitty gritty of the, the Japanese market, that will be not relevant to many of the uh, non-Japanese on audience. So can you actually give us a general notion? Well, that idea, like acquiring the certificate could work temporarily, by the transforming it into the renewable energy user, this is actually the mid and long-term goal. We definitely would like to physically use renewable energy. So that should be the goal for us. So that would be the main focus as a company. And we set the goal based on that idea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Eguchi, Mr. Atanabe, what do you make of that? And one of the uh, issue in Japan is the how we can actually establish the structure of the renewable energy certificate. Um, Nick already introduced the three main and has some challenge, very limited um, certificate available in the market, not that user friendly. And that is, so how we could design them in the way that the um, users can, user would be happy to use them. And I believe the Japanese government is aware of this point so that the non-fossil fossil certificate is something that we're going to design it in a better way. Could you actually give us more concrete um, example, when you say that it is not the user friendly, what do you mean by that? Well, J credit or the green electricity certificates, especially as the number of the green energy certificate, the number of them are very limited. And for the non-fossil certificate, initially, design for another purpose, not purely for the renewable energy consumption. So these are initial design was not meant for the renewable energy consumers and there wasn't any tracking system at all. So for the non fossil certificates, initial purpose is different from what we are trying to, to achieve. Thank you. So when we start to talk about the Japanese market issues, then there is actually the surcharge system, which is disadvantaged to the renewable on the market and also the offshore market would give a significant impact on the retailers. There are mul multiple different issues that we need to address in the market. So the consumers or the users send in a message that we do need that on the renewable energy. This like a voice of the users needs to be heard and we have to make, uh, make an effort to do that. Now the JCLP 20, by 2030, 50, 50% of the renewable energy usage, we've already actually submit a proposal. JCLP, I know the renewable energy in Japanese market has been already on a convoluted, but I would like to quickly touch upon where we are in and how it's designed. Now the upper stream renewable energy goal, now we are 2020, but heading toward the 2030. So 
um, various um, policies and structures needs to be designed in line with that the big goal. Otherwise, it's hard for the investors to, to put money into it and non fossil certificate or so many other relevant um, schemes that needs to be involved. If we try to achieve 100% of the renewable on the energy usage, then there's actually a limit for that. So there are some actually as the notion and ideas conflicting each other in the landscape. The, the time is taken, not much time is left. So there are actually multiple formula that we need to think about. Otherwise, we shouldn't be able to address all the issues that we are facing right now. So once again, to Mr. Nakaya Fuji and Baker McKenzie, I would like to ask this question. RE100, you are the RE100 company. What are the top item that you should actually address to bring the biggest impact on the Japanese renewable energy landscape. Maybe you could say like a battery system, like improvement, anything could be possible, like a technical side or a policy side, administrative side, but what really matters the most in terms of the on bringing the biggest change into the Japanese um, market of renewable energy. Let's start with Baker McKinsey. Thank you for your question. As Mr. Matsuo mentioned, ambitious goal is necessary. So right now, uh, the government is revisiting the basic plan of energy and then the Economic Japanese Circle Association actually put out the 40% of the renewable energy or some other organization put out the 45% so that setting the an ambitious goal and a propose, make a proposal to the government so that the investors feel more comfortable to put money into the Japanese renewable energy market leading to the on a greater capacity supplied into the users. For example, the, in Taiwan, the offshore wind power with a 5.5 gigawatts, and they will have an incremental to reach the 10 gigawatts by 2030. And Allstat, offshore power on a wind power generated electricity will be sold by the um, Denmark company. So the ambitious goal is definitely needed to give a more um, confidence. And I know it's a chicken or egg thing, but the capacity and the volume needs to be increased in the first place. Mr. Tanabe, please. The industry as a whole needs to go hand in hand and be creative to tackle with, grapple with the, the issues, not only the users, but the retailers or generators, everyone as a stakeholders in the market. How can we address the issues without subsidiaries? or incentives from the government. Every single players get together to be creative to address the issue. Thank you. Can I ask your opinion, Mr. Nagai? So as a manufacturer, the switch to all E, that gives us an international competi competitivity. Because this discussion is really uh, 
energetic obviously so and it's also uh impacts the japanese market so let's just keep the discussion going thank you today uh prime minister suga has mentioned a net zero policy and also under the administration they are also trying to remove the value でしたかね、あの、ね、あの、熱心に取り組んでいらっしゃいますので、え、これで、え、様々な問題ありますけれども、え、一つ日本が大きく動く重要なタイミングがこれから来るのかなというふうに思っております。で、ま、あの、それのような中でですね、え、富